purpose of citizen comment, I would like to recite the procedures of the city council. Section 2-55 and 2-58 of the Sparkwood City Code establishes procedures for conducting public hearings. Those procedures provide that number one, citizens may be entitled to speak during the public hearing without prior notification to the clerk or to the city and shall limit their remarks to 10 minutes. It matters, it matters before council when council determines it is considering opposing positions. Council shall limit each position to a presentation of 20 minutes. In the event a public hearing matter attracts multiple individuals who wish to comment, city council may extend the time period for comment. And number two, each person addressing the council shall speak from the microphone, shall give their name and address for the records, and all remarks shall be addressed to the council as a body and not to any member thereof. No person other than the council and the person having the floor shall be permitted to enter into any discussion either directly or through a member of council. So I would like to open this public hearing for the purpose of citizen comment using these rules as our guideline. I would like to start out by asking, is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of this annexation? All right, if there's no one that chooses to speak in favor, I would welcome citizens who would like to speak against this proposal under the rules that I have just read. Again, if you could please come forward to the microphone, identify yourself, give us your name and address, and Ms. McIntyre will keep track of the time and we will do our best to manage the time as we have just stated. Ms. Clark, each person does not have 10 minutes. No, Max is the 10th person, the only one person. And then 20 minutes for everyone to get. Oh, yeah, that's correct. So each person, they may have 10 minutes, but a total of 20 minutes. That's correct. That's what we choose. That's correct. Yes, sir, thank you. I'll try not to take too much of everybody's time. My name is Bill Teachman, and I live at 110 Millican Road, just north of the city limits. I also own a piece of property, four pieces of property, over in the area that is going to be annexed. The largest piece of that property is industrial, and my concern is that when the city takes it over, they're going to change my zoning. Therefore, I wanted to know how many, you would say 75% of the people in that area want to be annexed into the city, and I wanted to have a list of those people so that I might contact the doctor. Well, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to get into an information session. I'll try to keep this under. Well, I'm willing to wait for a list to go to the city when you, you know, day, two days, week, whatever it takes to get the list. Can I address that later? Mr. Teachman, we'd be glad to take your name and run a copy of the petition and notify you to come pick it up at City Hall if you would like. And as far as the zoning issue that you spoke of, I think that this has already gone before the Planning Commission, contingent on annexation to make sure that your zoning would remain proper as it is now so that you'll come in as you would like. So I have your name down, Mr. Teachman, and we will run a copy of the petition for you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Jeremy Sands, 2 Dublin Court in Shannon Forest. I'd just like to offer a quick two cents on the big picture because I think the big picture frequently gets lost in affairs like this. I find it's helpful when you're looking for the actions of people or organizations to follow the money. And this is the Sunday edition of the Herald Journal, and the front headline was, City Revenues Continue to Decline. Well, it's a recession. I don't fault the city for having a decline in revenues. However, I do fault the city for its reaction to making up for that shortfall. There's this novel approach in corporate life and private life where when you come up short, you cut something. 
doesn't really happen a lot in government, and indeed the closest thing to eternal life on this earth is probably a government program. Uh, I think it might be better for the city long term if it's looking for fiscal solvency, if it cut programs, or develop a residential base in the existing city limits uh, a little bit more comprehensive than 600 square foot condos for just under $200,000. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Ms. McCabe, Mr. Mimmon. My name is Scott Talley. My address is 959 John D. White Senior Boulevard in the city of Spartanburg. And I stand before you this evening on behalf of the residents of the Shannon Forest neighborhood, five residents of the Blackstock Trace neighborhood, Mr. Don Powell, a resident of Byron Terrace located off of Hidden Hill Road, and Warrior Investment Company, owner of several tracks that are on the map shown before you. I'd like to begin with a little bit of history that led to the city sewer lines being expanded into the area that's before you this evening. And it goes back to an actual court case in the early 80s. And as a result of that court case, an order came down from Judge Paul Moore stating that for the city to expand its lines, it had to do so based upon an agreement with the Sparkbrook Sanitary Sewer District. That agreement was reduced to writing July 22, 1983. A major part of that agreement, and I believe uh, Ms. McCabe has a copy of this, states that the city may allow property owners desiring sewer service to voluntarily sign an agreement authorizing annexation of their property to the city limits when feasible. The city will not deny sewer service to anyone for failure to sign an agreement to annex their property to the city. Mr. Mayor, I will submit to you that many of the agreements, if not all of the agreements in the Shannon Forest subdivision in particular, are violative of that provision. In 1985, February 13, 1985, the city and the sewer district entered into a policy uh, statement confirming the position that was set forth in the July 1983 agreement. And in summary, one of the provisions of that was that the city cannot require annexation as a condition of service. I submit to you an evidence which showed that that provision has been violated as well. There are several other issues that I think are before you that make your petition flawed in this instance. And I don't want to get into a lot of detail because I know we have other folks that are willing to speak, but I'd just like to point out a few of those instances to the council. One is Moy Investment Corporation, located off Dudley Road. If you look at, I believe Ms. Monroe pointed just outside the city limits. That is the blue area screen right here. All of those parcels are owned by Moore Investment Corporation. The annexation sewer agreement that is in place stipulates that the petition before you must be signed by two individuals, if not signed by Representative Moore Investment Corporation itself. The city attorney, Ms. McCabe, has signed the petition before you tonight. I do not believe that is correct. That petition should be signed by Gene Adams and Jim Long. There is a document that I've been presented where Mr. Long purports to transfer his authority to sign that petition to the city attorney. However, the language in the sewer annexation agreement does not give Mr. Long the authority to transfer that power given to him to the city attorney. It is very limited in scope. Further, even if that document is found valid, Mr. Gene Adams' signature appears nowhere of record on the petition or in a document purporting to give the city attorney the authority to do that. If you look at those numbers alone, it's 12 parcels, each owned by one freeholder. They represent 2.4% of the total freeholders under this plan. State law requires that you have 75%. The map that was presented to me as part of the petition shows that 75.91% of freeholders have agreed to this. It, 